Hi everybody, welcome to week three. This week you continue learning about the Jewish people and the roots of Judaism. And so one of the things I want to talk about in the beginning was, um, as we talked about last week, there are all these different sources that we think together wrote the books that are in the Bible, especially the books that are in the Pentateuch. And it's the E source and the J source and the um, P source and the D source, right? So I want to talk primarily about the D source or the Deuteronomic historian because the chapters you're going to read primarily are the books that were written by this source. And so one kind of reoccurring theme, I don't think that it says this in the book, but um, one thing that you'll kind of see as a pattern is that the Deuteronomic historian seems to be saying that when the people obey God, things are good, and that when people disobey God, things are bad. And so that might seem like a really simple thing, but essentially we see in some of the writings in the Old Testament that sometimes people didn't know what bad things preceded people, you know, suffering, but they assumed that if someone was suffering, they had to have done something bad. There had to be some, you know, reason that they're being punished the way that they are. And so there's a real kind of emphasis on obedience and the price you pay when you're not obedient. Um, at the beginning of this, you're going to read about Joshua and the judges. So Joshua was the leader after Moses. And after Joshua led and died, then this moved into the era of the judges. This was kind of a lawless time where they weren't really governed by any overriding person, but they were living in the promised land. And so they uh, just had the leaders kind of come and go, and they would emerge naturally. They were just kind of charismatic leaders, people that just, you know, stood out to others as someone to go to and get advice from. Or if they were being attacked by a barbarian group or something like that, then they needed someone who could lead them in battle. So the judges basically kind of rose naturally as leaders and maybe, you know, stopped being the leaders once they stopped needing a leader. So it was kind of an interesting time in history. They were very resistant to appointing someone to be the king because they thought God was their king and that having a human king was somehow idolatrous. Eventually, though, the people um, see the benefit of having a leader during the times when they do. And so they kind of demand that they pick a king. And so the first king is Saul, followed by David. Uh, Saul was kind of a crazy person. He was pretty um, self-involved or self-serving and also got pretty paranoid in the end. And he ended up throwing himself on his own sword in a battle when he was going to lose. And then David rose to power after him. The Jewish people would say that David was the greatest of all the kings. He was great because he was a great military leader. He was awesome because he restored the Jewish people to a position of affluence and power that they'd never known. Um, they also would say he's great because when he committed a great sin by sleeping with another man's wife, when confronted about it, he kind of threw himself on the ground and begged for forgiveness. And so they see a real humility in him as well. And it's important to just know that because that's kind of the sort of person that they expected would be the Messiah. So they start using this Messiah language, talking about the anointed one, the one that they're all waiting for. And essentially, they were waiting for someone who would be like King David again. Um, David's son was Solomon. Uh, one thing Solomon did that's important is he kind of brought his father's dream to life by building the first of the Jewish temples. This supposedly was a very ornate temple that was up on a hill made with gold and the greatest acacia woods and all sorts of really fancy things. You could see it for miles up on this hill. And um, it got destroyed by the Babylonians. So first there were the Assyrians who came in and destroyed Israel, which was in the north. And then the Babylonians came and destroyed Judah, which was in the south. And when they did, they took all the Jewish people and they forced them to go live in Babylon. But they made them kind of split up. And this is what we call the diaspora. But essentially, they kind of separated the people so that they weren't living in huge communities of Jewish people. And they did this for a couple reasons. One, 
Um, they were afraid that if they all lived together that they would revolt, which was wise. And second, they also felt that if they split them up after 10 or so years, they would start to see themselves as Babylonians instead of seeing themselves still as Jewish people. So that's known as the Babylonian exile. And during the beginning of that, when they went in and destroyed Judah, they also destroyed the temple. Um, during the exile years and after, they were allowed, the Jewish people were allowed to rebuild that temple. And that temple later becomes known as King Herod's temple. The second temple was not as ornate or as um, detailed. And eventually Herod took the temple and kind of built onto it and kind of claimed it as his own. Um, so for the Jewish people at the time, three things were very important to them. The temple being one of those three things. Another thing that was important was the Torah. The Torah are the first five books of the Bible. In the Jewish tradition, they believe that God gave Moses the first five books on Mount Sinai when he went up there and got the Ten Commandments. And so for a Jewish person, um, they believe that that was kind of handed to Moses, and the Torah is very sacred to them. And then, of course, this um, Messiah figure, this anointed person that they were awaiting, uh, they are still waiting for that person in their minds today. But we believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And in the New Testament, that's one of the primary focuses, is trying to prove that Jesus is without a doubt the Messiah. So that kind of covers a little bit about what you'll read about this week. I do want to remind you that you have a discussion due on Tuesday, and you have to comment on someone else's post by Thursday. And also by Friday at 11.55, you have to take the first quiz. The quiz has 30 questions, and it will you'll have 45 minutes to answer them. You can use your book and your notes. Um, they'll only be as helpful as, if you, as they will be if you read them or if you take the notes. So make sure you've read the chapters and that you've taken the notes on the note packets that I gave you. And you can have those right in front of you when you're taking the quiz. So if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck and have a great week.